This is Catherine Cespedes, and you are listening to Yogini from the Block, where we talk about taking spiritual practices and spiritual principles off of the yoga mat and into our real lives. You can listen to this bi-weekly podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play Music, and anywhere that you catch your podcasts. This is Catherine Sis for this, and this is episode number seven, The Myth of Lightness and Darkness, The Yin and the Yang. So welcome to our seventh episode. I'm very excited to be sitting here with my producer, John Beathan. Hi there. And LaShonda Mills, who is silently sitting at the end of the table, smiling at me. Um, So today we're really talking about um, what the title says, the lightness and the darkness. And this really was inspired because this week I am... I'm working with Reverend Christian Sorensen at Seaside Center for Spiritual Living, and I am taking his class, A Living from the Mountaintop, and it is absolutely amazing. And so this week, what we're doing is that we're walking through the darkness, right? We've been walking through the, what do they call it? The the darkness of the the soul, something like that. It's something like... It's often called the dark night of the soul. That's what it's called. That sounds a lot better. That's exactly what it's called. And um, it's interesting because as I'm walking through the dark night of the soul, the very beginning of it is kind of like, yeah, I've been here. This is fine. And Reverend Christian has really been holding our hands and has walked us a little bit uh, further into this darkness and i feel like a lot of times we shy away from this a lot of times we are are frightened by this and it reminds me of when i was little and i would wake up in the middle of the night and i would go to the bathroom and the lights would be off and i remember thinking the lights have to be on if i'm going to be walking around you know at home because it's scary i'm not going to be washing my hands and see the mirror and then you know imagination is quite a beautiful thing So I remember thinking I need the light. I need this light because I can't do anything unless there is light in the room. And so a lot of the times, anytime that my home was dark, I would run away to find the switch, to turn on the light, and then I can go about whatever I was doing. And so this is here I am um, going through this class and now... I am not running towards the light because I'm being encouraged to continue walking this path to really see what is the darkness that I'm fearing. What is it that is so scary that that makes me want to run away? And in all of that, what appears is the the struggles of what keeps coming up in life, right? And for people, for every person, it's completely different. It's a different experience. It's a a different space. And I find myself very, very lucky to be in such a community that um, helps, supports, and encourages me. And thus, I'm going through this, and I know that I'm not going through this alone. And I, I, I want to really highlight this, this space, right? That a lot of the times that we are going through the dark night of the soul, we feel like we're doing it alone. And we forget that there are other individuals, there are other people, there are other countries that are also going through this dark night of the soul. And thus we are never alone in this walk. It just feels that way. And taking this class, I know that I'm not taking that I'm not doing this alone and I'm not walking through this by myself because I have my classmates and I have my teacher. And so that has made this transition a little bit easier for me, knowing that and living that. And here is where I kind of want to introduce the yin and the yang, right? Because growing up, the yin and the yang is just one of those beautiful things that is so symbolic and it's so beautiful. There was a uh, time and space where my sister and I would say that we were the yin and the yang. I love to wear white. Anything that was white, I was down to wear. And she loved to wear dark colors. And I, um, I'm i really loud, right? And she likes to be kind of observant, watch, right? And so we always considered ourselves to be the yin and the yang. And now I have really looked at what that means. The yin being... Um, the the white part of this yin and yang circle and then the yang being the dark part right and you think you would think at looking at it that it, it means two complete opposites 
But we forget that in each one, there is a seed of the opposite color. So in this yin, there is a little piece of the yang. And in this yang, there is a little piece of this yin. So again, walking through the dark night of the soul and knowing that it's dark and it's scary, but there is this light within me and there is this light, especially with my mentor and my teacher, Reverend Christian, right? Knowing that he's there, knowing that I'm not doing this alone, there is my light, There is my, I'm not doing this by myself. There is this, you can do this. It's going to be okay. Let's get through this. And really that is what has inspired this, this podcast, this talk, this episode is that feeling. It's that knowingness. It's that, um, that contrast, right? And what's so funny is that without, without this darkness, and I've mentioned it, I think at this point, four or five times, um, without that contrast, without that darkness, nothing can create. Right now, Lashonda is actually in um, California to celebrate one of our friend's um, baby showers, right? And I've discussed this before, how during pregnancy, the um, the baby is in darkness. You can't see the baby. Of course, you can like get sonograms, but like no truth and there's no reality. The baby is in darkness. You're, you're held in this darkness. And yet that is seen as beautiful. That is seen as just miraculous. But anything else that is quote unquote dark is negative, is bad, is scary. And yet you need this darkness, just like a seed in the ground. You need this darkness to develop. You need this darkness to kind of take in the nutrients, take in the light, take in whatever it is that you need to grow into that beautiful flower, to grow into that beautiful child, to grow into whatever it is that we are growing into. So this is me growing into whatever I'm growing into because I'm literally walking out of this chapter and I'm thinking, okay, So the darkness isn't that bad. It's like Pandora's box. Like there is this fear of knowing what's in there, right? There's this fear that don't open Pandora's box. Once you open it, that's it. Like you don't know what's coming out of there. But there is more fear in not knowing what's under there than there is in the fear once you open it and you can see. You can see what's in your darkness. You can see what's in what what fears you have. And then at this point, what, we're, what I'm doing anyway, is that I'm, I'm recognizing and I'm naming and I'm, I'm kind of befriending my darkness. So not too long ago, I was on the phone with one of my friends and <laughs> I was like, hello, darkness, my old friend. I was like, I get it. I get that song. Like <laughs> He befriended his darkness. He befriended his fears. He befriended it. He got to know it so that once it comes around, it's not so scary anymore because I know you. I know you. I know where, what this feels like. I know where, where this is. I know where I'm going. And I was talking to LaShonda earlier about how I got here and She had, she had no idea, um, you know, what it was. I remember telling her the last time I saw her, actually, I was leaving New York City and not until now was she, did she, um, tell me that she was scared. She was like, you were leaving and I was so scared. You were like going so far. And I, what I thought was, you know, you know what, Kathy, like if she needs me, I will be here. (laughs) I will be here when she decides to come back. And if things don't go well, I will be here to protect her. I will be here to love her. Right. And that really touched me because I was like, oh, that's wonderful. Because I was like, I was scared, but I knew that there was something inside of me. I knew that I would be okay. I knew that. I knew that. And this past week was Mother's Day. And a part that has helped me continue on this darkness of the night right is prayer which I talked about in my last podcast but not my prayers it's the prayer of my mother and my grandmother it's almost like they have created this um how do you it's like a net they have uh, set out this net out into the planet, right? And it's, it's an interconnectedness of all the mothers. So in my journey of getting here to getting into this very seat, to be sitting in front of you guys, there has been a series of motherly 
individuals, like very nature nurturing women in my life, right? Like Lashonda was like totally down to take care of me if something went 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 wrong, and I have found that. I have found that the prayers of my mother and my grandmother have forecasted out into the world. And there have been women who have showed up to, to tell me, like, I've got you. I, I will take care of you. And they've done it. They've brought me food. They've brought me whatever it is that I needed. Me never asking for anything has been, I have been protected and loved and healed through, through this love that was already there in the air. And although the prayers of my mother at the time were really prayers of God help her, she, I hope she's okay. She's so wild and she keeps going out into different parts of the world and I can't, I can't control her. But she did. She did allow me to go out into the world knowing, knowing that there is this knowingness in me. Right. So, again, I'm walking through this darkness and still I feel protected. I'm walking through this darkness and still I haven't run for the light yet. I'm walking through this darkness and I'm thinking it's going to be okay. So now I am emerging. I am emerging out of this darkness. Hallelujah. And I can see the end of the tunnel. And I am so grateful for this contrast. So incredibly grateful for this contrast because... There, there is this, there is this, um, there's this joy I feel like that just comes out naturally, you know, and it always looks like, oh, Kathy's got this, Kathy's like smiling, Kathy's fine. Kathy goes through her own things, you know, and I think that's what's so beautiful that in this time of darkness, now I can recognize that other people, regardless of their smiles or how nice their hair looks or how well put together they look, they have gone through their dark times or they are going through their dark times. So now to me, this darkness doesn't seem so negative. This darkness doesn't seem so scary. This darkness doesn't seem so negative because again, it comes back to, we spoke about this a few podcasts, um, episode two, right? Perspective. It's about the perspective of what's happening when it happens, so is it really that bad what you're going through? Is it really that um, you is it really that your vulnerability is is hindering you or is it that your vulnerability is allowing you to grow? Is it that your vulnerability in this quote unquote darkness is allowing for this movement within you to happen because without this contrast, without this discomfort, you wouldn't want to grow. What's like, if you're good, if you're good all the time, then I might as well stay where I'm at. I'm good. If there's lightness all the time, where am I going to expand to? Where am I going to spread out to? Who else can I become? I'm good. And yet every time I'm uncomfortable, every time I'm like, why can't things be better? I find a way, I discover a way to open up and allow this receiving to come through me so that I can create something more. Because I remember when I when I approached you, John, about doing the podcast, I was okay. I was all right. But there was something in me that was like, no, this is not this. I'm uncomfortable. I am uncomfortable. And something within me was like, talk to John. Just talk to John. So I talked to you about doing the podcast and then all of a sudden here we are creating this podcast. There was this discomfort of knowing that I am more than what I'm doing right now. And so every time I'm, I find myself in those little episodes, because they're really like little like pods of darkness, something great happens. And never in my life have I intentionally <laughs> walked into the darkness for any reason, because why? Why would you put yourself through that? And yet when you do it in a collective consciousness of people that they're all trusting, this is faith right here. They're all trusting that we're going to go through this period of discomfort and we're all going to come out and we're going to be okay. I mean, this is really due to the fact that we have Reverend Christian that's like, guys, you're going to be uncomfortable, but then you're going to have fun. So trust me, we'll get through this. And he has sent us emails and he has he has really like walked us through it. He's really walked us through it. And I've, I've actually become closer to my um, classmates because of it, because I think for the very first time I have allowed myself to be human. I have allowed myself to be in a class and be like, I don't know all the answers. Mm-hmm. 
If I may. Mm -hmm. Compassion. Compassion. Understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, camaraderie. Um, understanding between all of us. Mm -hmm. It's really what has, what has emerged uh, from this. And so now we're walking back into the light. Now we're walking back into the, to the ever expanding consciousness that is God. Right. And now I understand now I, for, I feel like for the first time I understand why there is quote unquote evil. Right. Because I feel like be, because we have God within us, God is not to me anyway. Right. We could all disagree. There, there is this knowing and this understanding, right, of what could help us all as a collective and then what could further enhance me and push me along and, and kind of be the best for me. And that's probably where quote unquote evilness stems from, right? Is that selfishness of it's only about me and it doesn't matter what I have to do to get there. It's about me. But when we start looking at the collective of how what I do is going to affect X, Y, and Z and it's going to help this community and it's going to be for the betterment of this group, that's when the shift starts to happen. And right now we are literally living in that shift. Like we're watching it right? It's on the news all the time. There are groups coming together. Black Lives Matter is coming together. There are all these protesters coming together really for this, for this change, shift, this new idea that it's no longer about me as an individual, that I'm going to get through this and it's going to be okay, but we are going to get through this and it's going to be okay. And not only that, but these set of um, quote unquote norms are no longer acceptable. Like you can't treat people this way anymore. This is not okay. It's, it's almost like when um, we got all these, um, what's it called? These rules, laws, and regulations from uh, OSHA, right? For like protecting the workers, right? There was a shift in, in that. There was, there was something had to happen at that point where it was, it was an agreement among many to say that you can't treat workers that way. You can't allow for, for dangers like this to be in the workplace because they have to be here and they have to work. Doesn't mean that you need to put them in dangerous environments, right? So there, again, here is a shift that happens. And then through the shift of the consciousness of a collective group, because it wasn't one person, changes happened. Rules and regulations happen. An entire department happened, right? And now we're seeing that in other in other areas. We're seeing this across the globe, and it's 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 it, it's a little uncomfortable, isn't it? It's kind of uncomfortable to talk about, depending on where you are. And then it's kind of it's no, it's not kind of. It's very inspirational to watch because you're like, Hallelujah! The world is awake. We are waking up, and here we are. Like how how. How thoughtful was it that you and I and, and you decided to come to this planet at this time where these things are happening, where we are available to um, witness and stand in times of movement, in times of shift to help each other kind of um, grow from that, to kind of um, inspire, uplift, empower one another, right? And again, this all comes from this all comes from a moment of darkness. This all comes from the, the shadows of not knowing what was happening here. This all comes from a long time of silence. Everybody saw it, but no one said anything. And there was fear in that. And out of that fear has grown this momentum to change, this momentum to move forward, this momentum of I'm so uncomfortable, I can't bear, I can't deal. And who else is going to be there to help me change and shift and grow and move forward? So, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've kind of worked with this thought of... Uh, light and darkness before. I remember, and I don't know if I've mentioned it on a podcast or not, but I remember leaving church one day and looking over at my friend and asking, if darkness is so bad, then wouldn't there be like nothingness? Like if, if 
the devil is bad, and there was no devil, there was no darkness, then there would be no good. There would be nothing. There would be nothingness. It would just be nothing. And I remember her going, <laughs> I remember her looking at me and telling me, you need to talk to like a pastor. <laughs> And I remember, I remember I said this, like literally walking out of church. So uh, three people in front of me turned around and looked at me like I was like, uh, I don't know, the devil himself <laughs> reincarnated. And it was very uncomfortable. And yet that's, that's what's happening. People are thinking for themselves. People are thinking for themselves and um, actually doing something about it. That is the major shift of what's happening right now. And and I know that to many, it looks like, you know, the United States is just not doing very well. But these are the times where we've actually woken up because we have uh, such times of a catalyst. There's a catalyst um, in, in place right now that's kind of moving people, right? This is the time of our darkness where it's moving people and it's telling us, it's kind of tapping us like, get up. Start moving. You're uncomfortable. Do something about it. You don't like this. Do something about it. And in that darkness, you sit there in vulnerability asking, what is mine to do? What do I do here? And this is where you um, truly open up and allow for God to, to come in through you, work as you, be you, right? So you're now we're moving in this world not only on how can I succeed, how can I do better, how can I you know, um, compete with the Joneses, but how can I influence? How can I serve? Again, this is all moving from the darkness. So from the darkness comes this beautiful light, comes this beautiful contrast, comes this beautiful perspective of knowingness, of grandness for me. And so again, the contrast of the darkness and the light and the good and the quote unquote bad, it, it really goes back to perspective because this is truly how I see life. This is truly how I see myself. I'm, I'm, I chose to walk in the darkness. Like who does that? You know, who does that? But I did it. And in doing it, I could, I could really see that even in the depths of the darkness where the snakes crawl and the fuzzy furry things like, you know, graze you, you're okay. You are, those are your snakes. That is your pit. That is your murkiness. That is, that is all yours. That is all yours. And so either you can sit there and stay there and just decide not to come out of it or we stand up and we walk out. You keep on walking. And it's funny because the first day, the very first day that we had to go into this darkness, mind you, this is a lot of like um, imagery, right? This is a lot of imagery and this is a lot of uh, meditation. So the first day we go into the darkness and I remember Reverend Christian reads it out of his book, um, Living from the Mountaintop, and we're supposed to be standing at this cliff, right? Standing at the end of the cliff and then looking down and um, jumping. And I remember jumping in my visualization. I jump and I spiral down, spiral down, spiral down. And then out of nowhere, imagination kicks in and I have a rocket ship on my back and I go right back up. I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm not going in there. I am not going in there. So then Reverend Christian continues with his, you know, I don't know if he knows that he does this. I feel like I feel like he does, at least unconsciously. So he basically says, what stopped you? And I was like, how did you know? <laughs> How did you know that I jumped and then I got a rocket ship in my backpack? And so, again, he brings us back to going in into that darkness. Again, I go into the darkness and um, something scurried along my feet. So I was like, oh, no, no, no. So I start climbing the rocks <laughs> out into the light, like where there was a peak of light coming into this canyon, into this valley. And um, he's like, you know, you have to. You have to be in the darkness. And I was like, uh. So in my imagination, this is all imagery. I have to crawl down from the rocks and go into the darkness. And I was like, all right, this is, why am I here? I am not this. And I, I find myself judging. I find myself judging myself because I'm here. I find myself being very mean. Like, this isn't mine. This is, this is disgusting. I don't want to be here. This is, this is, no, this is not about me. Like, no, I'm not about this. This, I'm, I'm out. 
And I, and I realized that that's how we treat ourselves when we're in a space that we're uncomfortable with or when we're in a space where we feel like we could be doing better. Like that's where we're the meanest to ourselves. If it was anybody else, you would tell them all the great things that they need to hear. But for some reason, when it's about you, you're like, oh, you suck. Like, why would you create this? Like, look at what you did. You're now you're here. Now you're walking in this disgusting. Like, what is that? That was mushy. I don't want to be here. And and I had to really let it go, release it, kind of just let go of all of all those negative words because they were creating this negative feeling and they want they Those are the things that make you want to run. And mind you, if you're running in the dark, you're only going to run into a wall. You have no idea where you're going. You have no idea. So these are the times where you really need to take it slow. These are the times where you really have to, like, you know, be easy because you never know what's right in front of you. These are the times that you really, you can really reflect. Like, oh, look at all that I've created. Oh, look at how long I've been here. And so now that I'm walking out, I'm kind of like... I'm glad I was there. I'm glad that I was there. I'm glad that I, I made it through. I'm glad that I didn't, I didn't cheat. I didn't cheat. I did it. Like, I really did it, and, and, and I'm out. I'm out here. I'm out here now, and I'm okay. And so now there's this whole new level of gratitude, this whole new level of understanding, this whole new level of light and love. Like, really what that means? Really, what does that mean? Where I do silent prayers right before I eat, or I do silent prayers before I go to bed. You know, like they're like because I'm out now. I'm so gr- I'm so grateful and I'm so appreciative that I'm out. But I know that if I were ever to get back in, that I can do it. I can get myself out. I'm gonna be right there, and I've really become. And I think this is the key for me, anyway. I've really become my best friend. Like, I am my number one cheerleader. Like, I am my number one. Like, I am my best friend. Like, I I love you so much. You never have to worry about anything. I've got you. Just like when we say it to our best friends or to our boyfriends or to our girlfriends. Like, you say, I've got you. Like, imagine when you say that to yourself. Like, I got you. Like, you know that when you say it to your mom or to your sister that you've got them. Like, you are going to take care of them. When we say, I got you to yourself, like that's it. You've got nothing to worry about. Anything and everything that could have ever come your way, that could have ever stopped you, you don't even have to worry about it because you've got you. So with all that being said, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Feel free to send me an email. I look forward to hearing from all of you soon. And that's that.